EZNZ podcast. This week is another week where we're delivering on something that we promised a little while ago. Yeah, and um, I'm glad that you remembered that we made this promise because well, I would not have delivered. Yeah, yeah. I'm always worried that I'll say something yeah. and then eventually someone will be like, Hannah, you didn't do that thing you said you did. Um, so this has very much been in the back of my mind while we've kind of been planning what we want to talk about this week. Um, and it's the anniversary of Windows 10. Woohoo! Yeah, That's exciting. Three, three whole years, which is very exciting. So Windows 10 was first released on the 29th of July 2015. Uh, and I remember that day very, very clearly. Um, I, yeah. was, uh, I was working for Microsoft at that time. I was like a brand ambassador out and about in stores. Uh, so it was very exciting um, training people on Windows 10, what was different, what was new, um, how it was talking similar. talking to you while you're carrying signs in the street. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely a story that, story. that I told. Yeah. I was living in Wellington at the time and I had like massive visual merchandising packs because I don't know if anybody remembers being going into any retailer when Windows 10 was released, but there were bright blue placemats, there were tear pads telling you how you could upgrade your device for free. Because remember, any yeah. Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1 device that met the minimum requirements within that first year got a free upgrade to Windows 10. Yeah, I, that was a huge deal. Yeah. Because um, I was in store at the time as well. That was yeah. a a big concentration for us to achieve so absolutely exciting time absolutely and what is so awesome about windows 10 is that it was actually the fastest adopted uh, operating system that microsoft had ever seen before wow and yeah. i largely absolutely largely credit that free upgrade period that we did have yeah absolutely it was good it was good yeah so yeah. this morning we've been talking a lot about why we love Windows 10, our memories of when Windows 10 first came out. So today we're going to discuss some of our favourite things within Windows 10. And we've also invited some special guests along to do a bit of a trivia quiz. Yeah, that's, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I am the question master. I've thought of uh, some yeah. questions this morning. Maybe some that will catch you guys out. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you will know the answers to all of them, maybe. Um, yeah. I learned some things in writing it as well, um, which you will, you will very soon see on the Podcast it's going to be as well. fun because I'm going to be on the dark for the questions for you once. Are, so, uh, you are. I'm Usually be I, uh, we do everything as a team, yeah. but uh, today you are. Yeah. I've you been kicked to the, the curb. Kicked <laughs> to the curb. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, my friend. All right, so let's start. I guess it's kind of a question of the week, but what are your favourite things within Windows 10, Pledge? Uh, it's so good that we've been talking a lot about Windows 10. Yeah. Um, so that I could, you know, come up with a few ideas of what I wanted to talk mm. about now. Um, and I know I've shouted out one of these before, but I always talk about it and it's, I know it's the, the humble push the windows key and type what you want and you'll find it absolutely it's... i was on the phone to my mum the other day actually yeah. she asked me if i was free for some tech support Ooh. um i'm sure we yeah. can all relate to that sorry mum not trying to drag you <laughs> um but anytime you're just like oh what's the question gonna be like i hope i can answer it maybe it's within my realm maybe it's totally way out there um but basically she was trying to get her monitors reconnected uh... um because something had happened but she couldn't find it in the settings so I told her just to hit that and type for like project or um, connect or, connect or yeah. one of those kinds of settings can't quite remember what it was but to type for that and she was like oh, I didn't know you could do that <laughs> and I was just like oh my gosh you know it's something that I've been doing literally every day yeah. for the last three years now uh, and I'd forgotten that people don't know that exists yeah. So, you know, sometimes I'm sure you guys can relate as well, you know, you feel like you're talking about it all the time, um, but if, you know, someone else hasn't bought a new computer for the last three years, five years, ten years even, they may not know these features exist, so it's always yeah. important to drop it into it's, conversation. It's super important, and it's something that I will um, tell anyone who asks me <laughs> um, if, you know, the, the computer they've brought for their parents or whatever mm. is right. It's just... It is the fail-safe, um, foolproof method to, to kind of make Windows um, even more accessible and yeah, more like easy to understand. Yeah, like it's literally the it's most so user-friendly option yeah. available. <laughs> you know, like and just hitting there and typing for whatever you want, being able to search through your files, yeah. um, your applications, all of those kinds of things. Easy, amazing, super awesome. Super good. I've, I've got I've got another one in my back pocket. Hannah, yeah. But why don't why don't you tell me one of yours first? I think one of my favourites has to be Windows Hello. Yeah, um, that cool. came out a little bit later. So that uh, Windows Hello first came out 
Um, it was talked about when Windows 10 came out, but the first device to actually have it was the Surface Pro 4, which was released later that year in November. Um, I remember that very yeah. clearly because that's when I moved to Auckland and started doing this job full time. Uh, but I think, you know, nothing is easier than sitting in front of your device and having a login with your face yeah. um, or your fingerprint for some devices. And now we're seeing that more and more um, across the board. Of course, it's available across the Surface family. Um, HP have utilized it a lot, Lenovo have utilized it a lot, Acer. Um, every every yeah, other OEM we is, have here yeah. in New Zealand, um, yeah, either that facial or fingerprint recognition is so much easier for interacting with your device, um, and has really just one of those things like like that type um, and Windows key. You know, it's just kind of become second nature, and it's yeah. super helpful to how I use That's, the device. I remember when it um, first came out, and um, when uh, Pro 4 first came into store. Um, there was someone who I was working with at the time, he actually took me aside, he was so excited yeah. to show Windows Hello, because, you know, nothing else had facial recognition at the yeah. time to log in. Um, and we went into, like, this admin room so we could test it out and give it a go yeah. and see how fast it was. And it was so fast, so good at recognising. Yeah. It was like, it was a really mind-blowing thing. and. And the fact that it is that military grade yeah. bio, biometric security, the fact that it reads all of the individual points on your face um, and you know something really reassuring about that like naturally when you hear about facial recognition like I've kind of you know people worry that there's just like a bunch of like kind of pictures yeah. stored of you somewhere yeah. on a server right but because of the way I'm not looking forward to editing this <laughs> seeing my face there um, <laughs> but the, the awesome way that it works is that essentially you come up as a code yeah. Um, you know, a bunch of ones and zeros and all of that jazz. As you can tell, I'm not a programmer, so I'm not entirely yeah. sure how that kind of stuff works. But it is done um, based on depth perception, thermal mapping, all of those kinds of things uh, to be safe and secure. Yeah, it's super dope. Um, I'm going to cheat with my next one. I'm, mm. I'm, re I'm only going to bring two for now. Um, okay. So that we yep. don't... Don't go too ham, but there's Yeah, uh, I just realised that I didn't see the limit on this. Yeah. I could actually talk about this we, all, all day. day. Uh, 12 hour podcast, yeah. here we come. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's one, and it's a little bit of a cheat because it combines Office and Windows 10. Yes. Um, and that is utilising OneDrive through File Explorer, mm -hmm. which is super cool. And um, just like, you know, pressing the Windows button, it's something that I use every day. So... Um, I, I guess that's something about Windows 10 in general, the, the usability of it, um, the functionality Absolutely. is just so refined and so polished, um, yeah. you know, building oh. off oh, so many editions of Windows now, I, I yeah. feel like counting them all from 95, 98, 2000 XP, um, Vista. Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1. Windows 10, look at all the, the all legacy the yeah, that it absolutely. has to build off of. Um, and it's, it's done so well at that. And now being able to utilize that cloud storage, which is very oh, much, yes. you know, that future of computing using yeah. the cloud yeah. um, to do just so much from a productivity standpoint mm. and putting that into what we know. Mm. So File Explorer is also Absolutely. being able to free up space and, and you know, yes. store things just yes. on the cloud, having the little icons to tell me mm -hmm. what it is. Uh, files so that I know that I, I need to download this file if I'm going to use it. Absolutely. Um, being able to to share straight from that menu with people to create links, yeah. um, to send in emails. Like, it's just a lifesaver. Those two things mm. are probably my most utilized features of Windows 10 on a day to day I basis. I think the good old File Explorer is probably mm. the unsung hero of Windows. Yeah. One of them. I think that I've probably used that term too many times. <laughs> um, but the File Explorer has something that, like, honestly, it hasn't really changed. Yeah. Um, throughout all of those versions of Windows, which we just mentioned. So I think having OneDrive inbuilt there. Uh, is super helpful just for that usability. Um, yeah. OneDrive was released in 2013 by the name of SkyDrive originally. Oh man, I remember uh, that. Uh, I yeah, do. Fun yeah. fact. Um, so that came when um, Office 365 was first introduced and it's very much something that we've seen go from strength to strength yeah. in that period of time as well. Um, but we use it every day for collaboration, um, I use it on my phone to back up all of my photos. Yeah. Having that kind of connectivity in the one space yeah. um, is super helpful, but at working across my devices or any device even, like even through a web browser on a computer yeah. I've never used before, I can log in with my account and access all of my files. So that is absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I um, I know that I, I 
shouldn't just keep talking about it, but yeah, like the fact that you can use OneDrive on a web browser, like you say, yeah. um, on any computer is awesome. Yeah. Um, but just that familiar familiarity is what absolutely. Like, I, I absolutely love to stress about it um, because I'm, I'm we people have had mm. it, and we've said that before on this podcast as well, but. It makes OneDrive just so much more accessible yeah. to everyone who's kind of known and love Windows. It's, Absolutely. It's good. It's Absolutely. so great. And I love that you said mm. that, Fletch, because this isn't going to be my next thing. I've got yeah. something else I want to talk about as well. But we can't talk about Windows 10 without talking about the Start menu. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was very much the, the reason that the Start menu came back. Um, because it was familiar. That's what people wanted. That's what people asked for personally. Loved Windows 8. Yeah. Loved Windows 8.1. Um, it was very much my job to. <laughs> um, but you know, I really like the tile interface. I really like the personalization of it. And the fact that if I only use three things in a day, you know, a web browser, Outlook, and Word, for example, because um, that was while I was at uni, so they were probably, and maybe like Groove Music, the application at that yeah. time. Those were the only things I had pinned to my start screen. Bam, boom, nice and easy, super simple to just go and hit one of those. Very much compared it to like apps on a smartphone or something like that. Um, but as Fletch said, you know, it's more accessible when it's familiar. Yeah. If it's something you've used before, if it's something that you know, um, having having that start menu brought back, I think was really crucial um, to people loving Windows. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Because it's a, it's very much one of those things, you know, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, um, all of those kinds of sayings, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. Um, so everybody loved the start menu, so I got bought back with Windows 10 um, in 2015, and there were, of course, some changes made to the start menu. So the first and most obvious one is the fact that the tiles are now there as well. Yeah. Um, and how often, do you, cool. how often do you use your tiles, Fletch? Because of how much I talked about loving just that hit button yeah. and search, yeah. not as much as I should. Okay. I'm going to be honest there, yeah. but that's, I think that's a good example of showing how it works for two different people as well, right? Absolutely. And I think that's a really, I, I, I don't know, it's just my habit, hit the button, search what I want, and it's just there. Um, totally, and that's the thing I that people love. I have customised a little bit, though, I will say. Yeah, that. okay. Mm. That's the thing that everyone loves about Windows, right? Yeah. Right? And that's why it's been kind of so well-loved yeah. um, over over its time, is the personalisation uh, and how you can like really go in and make it what you want it to be. Yeah. Um, and that's super interesting. I actually didn't know that. I thought you were just going to go for gold and say, yeah. I use it all the time. You know, I felt like I should. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I feel like I should backhand her yeah. up here. But, but you know, we're, we're yeah. honest people. We, we, we are, uh, don't we drive on this podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I honestly use it, my tile yeah. side of my start menu all the time. Yeah, right I've now, opened it up tell. just uh, for my yeah. own <laughs> reference. Um, but the first thing I've got on there is Spotify. Yeah. Um, it is an app that launches automatically when I open Windows because I just like to be listening yeah. to music, having some jams. I'm that annoying person tapping you're, on a desk or maybe like whistling to myself. I am, I am. So that's kind of bringing everything I love into my day to day. I've got the Photos application, I've got all my Office apps that I use all the time, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Microsoft Edge, and the store. Yeah. So those are the main things that I use on a daily basis. So having those icons there, I really like. Um, some of them I have on my taskbar, but generally I keep my taskbar pretty fresh. Yeah. Um, because I like that interface. Yeah, yeah. I like it, I like it. Yeah. yeah. And then another notable change that came to the start menu um, when it was released with Windows 10 was that everything was now in alphabetical order. See, rather that than by category. saves me a lot. Um, I like, like I say, I do type and just yeah. that's, that's my like choice. That's how yeah, um, I've gotten into the habit and that's what I do. But every now and then, I don't know why. Yeah. I'll just go through the alphabetical order just cause. Just cause, like, and cause then, you can. Yeah, just cause I can. And like, I know that sounds like the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. But I just do it because I can. And sometimes yeah. you just go, you know, I use these same applications yeah. every day. But what else do I have installed? What yeah. else could I maybe use to use to do this thing? Yeah. Um, for example, I was actually thinking about this the other day. We do a lot of like one pages to summarize a new product or something like that. And I do it in PowerPoint all the time. All the time. If you didn't know, you can change the slide size to make it an A4 yeah. or an A3 or any standard piece of paper size or a custom size or whatever you want. Um, so because I do so many presentations within PowerPoint, I find it really easy to bring everything back in using the same program. Publisher. What about 
like Publisher. Yeah, There's literally true. what Publisher there is for. Publish. Why do I never use Publisher? It's, that just shows our habits as well. We're so used to exactly. using PowerPoint for everything that we do. Exactly. Um, but yeah. that's, once again, like, what I love so much about Office, as we're talking about, but Windows as well, it's it's customised to how I use it on a daily ba basis. Um, so it's familiar, it's personal, it's productive, you can do all of those things, which is always super, super exciting as well. Uh, so I have gone off topic, um, but I would like to come back to my other no favourite thing um, that I've seen introduced into Windows 10 over the last three years, uh, and that is the Windows Inc. workspace. Yes. So this was introduced in July of 2016, so it was called the Anniversary Update to Windows, so a year after it was released, um, and that was where we saw a lot of new things um, come into play. So at that time a lot more devices were touch screen, we were really looking at inking, and kind of the ways you can interact with your device. And I've kind of realised that that's very much the wavelength I'm on with what we're talking about today, is that the way I interact with my device is really important to me. Um, and I think that it's really important to a lot of other yeah. people, right? Like, I use this bad boy, I've used many devices over the last three years, but I want it to work for me, not against me. Yeah. Um, I want to work smarter, not harder, all of those classic things we usually say. But I think putting that little pen icon down there with some recommended applications really saw, um, once again, the accessibility and the usability of inking just go from here to here. Yeah. Um, when Windows 10 first came out, um, we had inking with an edge, and that was a really big thing. It was. Uh, something that had never been seen before, no other browser did that. And then we saw inking really just go throughout Windows. Um, there's even a new game called it's Nori's Escape. Yes, um, Nori's Escape. so good. Highly Check recommend checking it out, but that is a really cool um, pen-based game. Um, so it's like a level... Um, it's a runner style game. It's a runner, so it's a thank runner you. Game. New Life is a yeah. game. <laughs> um, but you can draw with your pen to kind of help um, Nori move along yeah. um, throughout that. And it's super cool. So just different ways to interact with the pen. I love sticky notes. I'm very much a quick reminder to yeah. myself kind of person. Always use sticky notes. Love that my sticky notes, if I type in or if I even handwrite in, if I put in a date or a time, that will automatically link it to my yeah. calendar. Um, sketch pad, screen sketch. And as well, it also recommends other apps that I can use inking within as yeah. well. And like I, I like um, just want to reinforce what you were saying about you know Windows kind of lets you mm. um, use it how you want to use it, which is really Absolutely. awesome. And um, I think one of the humble things about the Windows Ink workspace is just the functionality with the actual pen you can buy itself. So like a Surface Pen, Absolutely. being able to just click a button and have it open is so yeah. important. Um, it just makes it so much easier to use a pen. Mm -hmm. And like, if a pen's not easy to use, no one's going to use it right. Absolutely. So, so it's very cool that that thought has been put into it. Yeah. And it is and really easy to access all those, you know, key, key programs that you would use a pen with. Absolutely. And basis. I think Digital Wink is something that's been around for so long mm -hmm. now. But we really need to push the actual usability of it, right? Yeah. Like, writing on a screen is cool and all, but why would I do it? Yeah. You know, being able to sign a contract and email it back off rather than having to print it out, sign it, scan it back in, then email it. You know, that's one step instead of three or four steps. Yeah. Super nice and easy. So just that usability, inking with an office, inking with Windows. Um, I really like screen sketch. So if, you know, someone sends me something, I can just pop it open. But all of those features have kind of built their way into other things. Yes. So it comes down to, once again, how I like using it, what I'm using it for, who I'm using it with as well. Yeah. Um, super important. And as well, one last thing that's just come to mind while we're talking about that as well. We've talked about the hit Windows and start searching, but the other search features within Windows as well. Really, really important within the settings. That's something that's been greatly improved over yeah. the last three years. Um, when you're using a computer, there is nothing more annoying than remembering you can do something, but you're not sure how to do it, where you found it last time. Um, so it's really great. Literally within the settings, there is now a search bar um, that comes up to find a setting. How helpful is that? I honestly so can't good. remember. Feel like maybe that came in with one of the creators updates. It definitely wasn't there from the start. I honestly can't remember. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it just did kind of sneak its way in, eh? Yeah. That's one thing. There's always lots of um, small changes that happen with updates. And, yeah. 
Uh, we talk about a lot of it, you know, but it's hard to cover everything. But there's yeah, always something that's absolutely. new to learn. Absolutely. Like the, the interface, of course, is a really big thing that changed. The action center, we haven't even talked. See, there are so many things. So much. So many things. Yeah. Um, Windows 10 as a base OS, and then all of the updates, the really large feature updates that have come within the last three years as well, um, has really revolutionized the way that we do things. Uh, and as we kind of said, like when we were talking about it this morning before sitting down uh, to talk to you guys, um, thinking about when certain things came in, yeah. how they changed, when they changed, uh, it's quite difficult, you know, it really becomes second nature when you're using it every day, so maybe you don't necessarily remember to call it out, you can kind of take it for granted, yeah. I know I'm guilty of doing that, you know, when you know something, you don't remember not knowing that fact. Uh, so it's yeah. really important to, to really focus on those things. I, I think that could be a cool thing um, for us to ask you guys then as well. Like We've yeah. got the question of the week, but is there anything you want to know more about from Windows that we Absolutely. can talk about? Or is there something that you're not sure if it's a feature, but you'd be keen to know if there's something yeah. like it out there? Yeah. Definitely let us know and post it in the comments so we can... Yes, can talk please. about it on another podcast. It would be really cool. Yes, there's please. So much. So let's make sure we make it relevant to you guys. Absolutely. So in the comments below, as Fletcher said, ask us about any features. Ask us if there's anything you want us to go further in depth. But also tell us what your favourite features are, and maybe tell us if there's a feature that you use every day Absolutely. that maybe you've started to take for granted. Cool. Quiz time. Quiz time. <laughs> Okay, marvellous. So we are doing a trivia quiz around Windows 10 and maybe some other things that happened around the same time as Windows 10 was released. Just to throw it out there. So everyone, we need a buzzer sound. This is a free for all. So as soon as I ask the question, get in as fast as you can with your answer. But to make it fair, let's let's have a buzzer sound. So Susan, what's your buzzer? Uh, Olivia? Yeah. Excellent. Joel? <laughs> Great. And Fletcher? Marvellous. All right. <laughs> The first question is, which favourite feature was reintroduced to Windows with Windows 10? Uh, Susan. The start menu. Absolutely, the start menu. Well done. Question number two. When the start menu, when was, sorry, when was the start menu originally introduced into Windows? Uh, Susan again. Windows. 95. Excellent. Well done. You're on fire. Are you old? That's <laughs> <laughs> why we're brushing yeah. the grey out. <laughs> what sporting event held in England did New Zealand win in 2015? Fletcher. The Rugby World Cup. Yes, indeed. Since the release of Windows 10, this is probably the trickiest question so far. Since the release of Windows 10, name the four large feature updates to Windows. Susan. Creators update? Yes. April update? Yes. Is it called April update? Is there four of them? Yes. Uh, anniversary? Anniversary update. Great teamwork, guys. Mm -hmm. One the more. full creators update. Was there full creators and anniversary and so April? Anniversary was first, followed by the creators update, then the full creators update. And most recently, the April update. Well done, great team. Does that make guys. me all score one? You, except you, for Olivia. Olivia. Except for so sorry, yeah. Olivia. <laughs> yeah. Everyone but you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got two. This, <laughs> this is another more difficult one. Um, in the Windows 10 anniversary update, what three default apps were introduced to the Windows Inc. workspace? I personally use these every single day. Every single day. Is that true? The no. Note, notes? What are they called? Sticky notes? Yes. Um, a screen snip thing? Yes. Close. What's it called? Screen sketch? Yes. Marvellous. And um... The third one is very similar to that. <laughs> yeah. Help me out. Uh, sketch pad. Uh, yes. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Great. Right. Teamwork once yeah. again, guys. <laughs> right. Alright. We're on fire. Um, question number six. Starting in 2010, the 29th of July is also the International Day of what endangered animal? <laughs> the panda? No. Uh. Close. Same kind of a region. No, it's not. That's not true. <laughs> 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 Hold on. Uh. No. But I 
I would just relate those animals. Do we all get a point for you Until leading nine. us down the garden no. path? Animal. Mm. So is it a bear of some sort? No, it is oh. not a bear oh. of any sort. Same region, I mean, same part of the world? Yeah. But yeah. I think she just said, I think I was is it like no, a broad part of the world? It's a, it's a, think of the endangered animals in the world. There's quite a few of them. Yeah, there's a lot because we need to look after the environment some more. Um, it's a beautiful animal. I feel um, like you're thinking about a tiger. A peacock. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. 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 yeah, so the 29th oh, of July I mean, is tiger. the International Tiger Day, <laughs> just so you guys wow. know. Wow, yeah, um, okay. I've got that. No. There when were many endangered animals. Over many time, endangered like animals, but it was introduced uh, to raise awareness of saving the tiger's habitats. Uh -huh. Thanks Wikipedia for that fun fact. Right. Um, when <laughs> Windows 10 was released on the 29th of July 2015, what tagline did we use for Windows 10? Oof. Was it do great things? It came out. Yeah. Do great things. Do great things. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, well, because everything was do. do yeah. This, do that. Yes. Do great things do with do Windows great. 10. I mean, do more. Do more. <laughs> yeah. It was very, uh, very was much. Nice. They were like the four pillars were around being able to do great things with Windows 10. Um, all right. Question number eight. Name a new feature of the April update. Because. Uh, Fletcher. Timeline. Excellent. Um, yeah. Well done. Can we name some others while we're here? Do anyone? Uh, focus assist. Yes. Mere by sharing. Perfect. Those were the three that I wrote <laughs> down. <laughs> <et cetera. laughs> In 2015, what did Ireland and the USA legalise? <laughs> like all of the USA. The whole, or every state? I'm not sure, I don't understand how the US do these things, but it was quite a, it was a big thing. Because! Uh, same sex marriage? Same sex marriage, well yes, done Fletcher. Yes, far out. Alright, lucky last and probably my favourite question, because I always forget about this and then every time I remember it brings a smile to my face. Um, when Windows 10 was released for beta testing, what was the web browser, now known as Edge, called? Ooh. It's a great name. I don't actually know that one. Give us a clue, Hannah. Um, the movie 300. <laughs> it was oh. not a clue. S Sparta. Sparta. Yeah, no. Project Sparta <laughs> was, it, was, was the actually? original name for Microsoft <laughs> Edge. Who knew? What a great wow. thing. Excellent. <laughs> That's great. I do it I like Sparta, yeah. Sparta, I don't know. But that was, uh, that was a favourite thing of mine, joining the Insider Preview in the lead up to it. Loved it. Thought it was great. Alright, thanks so much for joining us team. That was 10, <laughs> 10 Windows 10-ish related questions. Who won? <laughs> I think it was Susan. Yeah, to be fair, Susan Solitaire's got robbed last <laughs> time. She came yeah. back, she came in strong and made up for it. Thanks yeah. for joining us team. What's your price? I'm sorry. Oh my god. Sorry, you get to go back to work. I get to go, you can go back to work now. <laughs> <laughs>
No! <laughs> no, 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 but absolutely, it, it's been yet another great podcast. Make sure you answer those questions about Windows 10 and your favourite features. And absolutely. let us know what you want us to talk about. Because yeah. we want we want to talk about stuff you are interested in. Absolutely. So, until next week. Until next week, happy birthday on Sunday, Windows 10. Happy Three birthday. Marvelous years. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you next week, then.